tanks, and this is really my favorite part of the tanks. And as you can see, Bob has a lot, and it goes further, and this is, this is like the back side of it. And it's all the different species and everything. Uh, Bob, when you have this many fish, how do you keep track? How do you know what is your livestock inventory? We have a tag. We'll say what the fish was right here, the day when it was hatched, and the date it was moved into the system, and then for inventory reasons, we count. On this particular batch of Picasso's, there was 671 fish. Then we also have tags over here, what they eat, what food group that they're... So, number like 671, that's pretty precise. That's a good, that's a good amount of fish here. We count all the fish before we move them into the system. Okay. You, you do that by hand? I mean, you just... We do it with collection cups. We don't use nets, okay. so it's collection cups. We're okay. counting them out. One fish, two fish, three fish? Yeah, about 10. I get up to 100, I write down 100, then I start all over so, again, then add up how many hundreds. So again, if we go back to the, the amount of time that it takes to do this, um, water changes every day, a lot of patients involved. A lot of patients. Like on the babies over there, we're feeding them seven times a day. On these fish here, they get fed three times a day. Well, I didn't even ask that. Seven times a day on the, for, on the fry. The, the fry. Yes. And three times a day on these guys. Right. Now we're feeding these guys pellet food, and then we're also feeding them frozen food. The frozen food is a lot more expensive, but we're doing that so when these are purchased in a pet store right there, will adapt to a lot of different varieties of food. Okay, and so is that is that why you do that? So that whatever tank it arrives in, it, it kind of doesn't matter what the person's using? It's giving the fish a better chance of survival. Okay, very good. And you have all the different varieties in these, in these uh, grow-out tanks too, right? Right, we're looking at Picasso's, Wyoming Whites right over here, a lot of Ocellaris. We have some mocha fish, we have some extreme misbarred mochas, we have a lot of black and whites. So one of the things I'm noticing as I look at these Picassos, there is a, a pretty good variety of color in the Picassos. Do you pay attention to fish that might be unique and keep some of your own to breed, or do you just, are you selling all of these regardless whether they're beautiful, perfect fish or, or not? There's too many of them in here to get attached to, even when you do find something really good. And if I was to take a pair of these to put in my breeders over there, typically I got to get something up to put another pair in. So, okay. so for right now, we're working with what we got. We're trying some different species outside of clownfish, but these are all going to be for sale in a matter of months. Excellent. Excellent. So, for me, it was just fascinating to see that, but what, what does that movement represent? Why are they doing that? They're all balling up. It's safety in numbers. Okay. So this is just their way of kind of like a herd. Pretty of much. Something. And then every time we go by, they're thinking that I'm going to feed them. Oh, uh, okay. So they're kind of trained. They know. When they see you come by, whatever here, it's like time to eat. This video has shown the grow out systems, and in the next video we'll talk about reef stew and how Bob ships his stuff out. This is just a quick look around the whole facility. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.